So I'm going to do the quarters and run it. Uh, not quarters. What am I doing? Months and then run it. So now we've got the side by side of the balance sheet January uh, and February. It puts the older uh, month first. And if I have multiple months, like three months, then I can do three months on the same report. But if I only have two, two periods, then it's often useful for me to do it a different way and take the difference between the two. So I might say, okay, maybe I'm going to go back to the total this way. And then the way I can do the difference is I can run it for the second period, which in this case is 020123. So just for the month of February, 0201. So just for the month of February now, which is the end of February, of course, because it's a balance sheet and it's a total only. But then I'm going to select the drop down and say that I want to see the previous period, which is January. And then I can also pick the dollar change and the percent change and run that. So now I've got February 1st, the current period, the prior period, the difference and the change. And I can call this something like maybe a comparative, comparative balance sheet. And so again, we only have two periods now, two months, but if we had multiple months, you can imagine doing multiple comparisons for different months, uh, different quarters, uh, quarter by quarter, and so on and so forth. So you can start to think about how, what kind of reports you would have at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, and what kind of reports you might be comparing to prior years uh, as well. There's also a question now of, should I just give them this report, which gives them the total balance sheet as well as a summary balance sheet, which is kind of redundant and a standard balance sheet, which is kind of redundant. Sometimes it might be useful to do that because it's easier to start out looking at a summary balance sheet and then expand on the detail, go into a more longer balance sheet, the standard, and then go into something like this, which is a comparative balance sheet. If I, but, but you might say, hey, maybe I just want to give them this because it has all the information in there and giving them the other reports is redundant. In my experience, the redundancy is good if you're doing a presentation, for example, or even just giving the reports to someone oftentimes because you don't want to overwhelm them with, with a, a report with too many numbers. You'd like to impress them with a report with too many numbers, but you probably want that one buried somewhere deeper into the, into the stack of reports and have the top report be as simple as possible because that might entice them to actually look at it for a little bit more than a second before they roll their eyes. So in any case, I'm going to customize this up top. And then let's say we're going to get rid of the cents and bracket the numbers. And then we'll say that I'm going to say headers and footers, get rid of the date, time, report basis. I'm going to run that. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab and see where I want to save it. I'm going to save it as like, a balance sheet number number I want to make this one well I'll make it number five report I'll just make it number five so I'm so I'm going to try to cut number them so I'm going to save customization I'm going to make it just number five report and I'm going to put them under the report group that I made here month in report so I can pull them up each month and just generate them so I'm going to save that so then if I go back to the first tab and refresh it it's going to go into this customized customized area. So now I can just generate it each month and just change the dates here, which we'll do in, in the following presentation.